Looks like OpenAI is trying to make up for the underwhelming launch of GPT 4.5 with a new model series called the GPT 4.1. But here's the weird part. They've launched it only through an API, not through ChatGPT, which is interesting. But anyways, here's the breakdown. First, we've got GPT 4.1, then a lighter model, which is GPT 4.1 mini. And then lastly, we have the fastest, more efficient model, a part of the series called GPT 4.1 Nano. These models beat GPT-4 Omni and GPT-4 Omni Mini across the board with major jumps in coding, instruction following, and long context performance. They now support up to 1 million tokens of context and actually use that context quite well, no more lost in the middle issues. In regards to coding, the GPT-4.1 crushes it on the Sway Bench Verified Test with a 54.6 percentage, which is a 22 approximate increase in terms of its improvement over the GPT-4 Omni and even better than GPT-4.5. Instruction following, super solid, long context, state of the art, which is insane. And now with the GPT-4.1 Mini, the wild part is, is that it beats GPT-4 Omni in several benchmarks with nearly 50% lower latency and 83% in terms of cheaper pricing, which is also going to make this model more appealing. And overall, this GPT 4.1 Nano is the budget beast that will be super fast and cheap with full support for a 1 million token context window. Perfect for autocompletes, classification, or large document processing. Honestly, the biggest win here is that we finally get OpenAI models that can be reliable and it's something that can massively handle large context which is perfect for reading full code bases or legal documents now in terms of rag you might not even need it in most cases anymore before we get started i just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the world of ai newsletter i'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis so this is where you can easily get up-to-date knowledge about what is happening in the ai space so definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free now you can see from this sheet over here the pricing is stated for all three of these different models the input for the gpt 4.1 is two dollars and the output is eight dollars per one million tokens it's still pretty steep but cheaper than obviously the previous models that we saw now gpt 4.1 mini is 40 cents for one million input tokens and 1.80 for one million output in terms of the nano model it is the cheapest one where the input is 10 cents and 40 cents for one million uh, tokens now what I really like about the 4.1 is that it's not just good at coding, it's an all-rounded coding model that crushes front-end, back-end, it is going to focus on various sorts of tasks that are complex and in this case it is super faster and cheaper than GPT-4 Omni. At 80 times the speed and time, you can see that it can rapidly generate almost anything for you. It's also a strong vision model, which is making this model even more appealing to use for all-rounded use cases. So not just for coding, but for general use cases. Now before I showcase the full test of this model, here's my two cents. I think that the GPT 4.1 is a solid lightweight upgrade but not cheaper or better than Gemini 2.5 Pro. I know it's a reasoning model, but still, it's not up to that level yet. But overall, it's a great all-rounded model that still feels a little behind in performance, but we still have got huge models from OpenAI coming this week, like the O3, but likely won't be as affordable as this model. But as a dev, the real question is, when should I use GPT 4.1 over Gemini 2.5? While I haven't tested it fully yet, but based off the benchmarks and what I have seen based off of the research, the strengths are is its long context window, which is great for big code bases and documents. There's no need for a rag when you're using this model. There's faster responses and no rate limits in comparison to G Gemini 2.5. And there's strong function calling. If speed, long context, and zero throttling matters more than just deep research, I think that the GPT 4.1 is for you and could be a better pick. And in terms of comparison to other models, it's better than Claude 3.5 Sonnet across every benchmark, which is great, and it is cheaper than it. So that's why you would potentially use this model over any other model. So what we're going to be doing is testing both of these models, the Gemini 4.1 and the Gemini 2.5 Pro, across a bunch of different coding models. It's marketed as a long context coding model that could definitely be really useful in various sorts of complex coding tasks. So let's first start off by having Bill 
build a front end that lets you track monthly income and expenses. We'll first take a look at what the Gemini model is capable of doing. We need to go ahead and select the Gemini 2.5 Pro and we can go ahead and then generate this responsive front end and then we'll go ahead and compare the response that we get from the playground from OpenAI. So let's go ahead and generate these two different front ends. And there we go. We finally have the generation outputted. This is what the Gemini 2.5 Pro was capable of doing. It does look quite beautiful, but it actually doesn't work. And in the same manner, what I've got from the OpenAI model is this front end. It doesn't look as good as the Gemini model, but it did create uh, an app. So that's definitely great. And in terms of functionality, it doesn't actually work because this category tab doesn't seem to be working. And maybe if I was to open it up in a full page, it might be but no, it doesn't look, seem to be working either. But overall, it did get the responsive front end generated, so let's go over and give both these models a pass. Next up, we're gonna have the two models generate code that will simulate a TV screen where you can change multiple channels with different number keys from zero to nine, come up with an idea for a channel for all the numbers. So it's gonna create a simulation for all the different channels and we're gonna see which generation is better amongst the two models. And there we go. This is the generation I got from the Gemini 2.5 Pro. This is kind of responsive and it actually looks pretty impressive. This is the first page, this is the second page where we have some random cartoon. Drama Central is the third page. We have the fourth page, which is Galaxy Odyssey. <laughs> the fifth page, the sixth page, seventh, eight, nine. So overall, it is pretty impressive in terms of the generation I've got from this Gemini 2.5 Pro model. And there we go. This is the generation I have gotten from the GPT 4.1. We have a no signal channel, which is displaying on channel zero. Number one is showcasing the world news. Number two is wild planets. And then you can see that there's various sorts of generations. This one is actually pretty cool. We have a live weather channel. We have a beatbox channel and a couple of others. Now, in terms of the generation, I gotta say, I do like the animation slightly better than what we saw from the Gemini 2.4. And overall, I think both of them did the job done. So we can definitely give both of them a pass, but I will say I like the generation more with the GPT 4.1. Next up, let's have the models create an SVG representation of a butterfly with symmetrical wings and simple styling. As we all know, this is a pretty difficult prompt for most models, but knowing that this is an open AI model, it's definitely gonna be successful with this prompt in my opinion. And this is what the Gemini 2.5 Pro was capable of generating in terms of the simple butterfly SVG. But let's go over and see what the GPT 4.1 was capable of generating. Let's go over to an online SVG viewer, paste this in, and there we go. We actually have a pretty cool looking butterfly. And in my opinion, this does look like a butterfly. But the only thing that is concerning is that the shape might be too inwards. It just needs a little spacing and it would have done actually a pretty remarkable job. So I would definitely give this a pass as well as giving the Gemini 2.5 Pro a pass. But overall, I do think that this is slightly better due to the symmetrical uh, shapes that is outputted within this representation of a butterfly whereas in this case we do have symmetry but it doesn't show within the main antenna as well as the main body so we'll still give both of these a pass but i prefer the gemini 2.5 pro now overall obviously the gemini 2.5 pro should be winning all of these battles but we can still see that the GPT 4.1 is doing quite well in terms of its performance up against a reasoning model. Next up, we're going to have the two models generate a Tetris game in 3.js in one HTML file. So let's see which model does a better job in this generation. So I've copied the code for the game that was generated by Gemini 2.5 into an online SVG viewer. I opened it up in a full page and it did get the interface right, I guess. Uh, I don't know what this line is, but we do have a functional game, but it doesn't seem to be properly working throughout the whole frame, which is the only problem. And you can't see where the shapes are dropping. So I guess you can give this a partial pass. In one shot, it didn't get the game right. But I bet you that if I was to prompt it correctly, we would get a better generation and a fix to that solution. But now let's go back and take a look at what the GPT 4.1 was capable of generating. And now take a look at the generation at the 4.1. And I am truly astonished to see that it did get the main interface right. But it is also generating a functional game, which is perfect in my opinion. This is why I think 
that this model could become one of the great new coding models that many of us could potentially use. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different AI tools for free on a monthly basis, plus daily AI news and exclusive content, plus a lot more. So lastly, let's give both of these two a pass. But overall, this is a great solid lightweight upgrade and it is something that offers you a lot in terms of a larger context window, faster than the Gemini 2.5 Pro with zero rate limits, and it has strong function calling and tool use reliability. Now these are tests that were more focused on coding, but overall, I would definitely use this for processing larger documents over the Gemini 2.5 Pro. And in other areas, it is more refined and definitely looking forward to seeing it being added to ChatGPT. But with that thought guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you subscribe to the second channel. Follow me on the Patreon. And make sure you guys subscribe to the newsletter. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe. Turn on the notification bell. Like this video. And please take a look at our previous videos. Because there is a lot of content that you will truly benefit from. But with that thought guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity. And I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out fellas.